Good morning. Can you hear me, Betsy? As a child born and raised in the segregated South in Montgomery, Alabama, my first introduction to the Lutheran Church was through my mother, who attended Trinity Lutheran Church School. This Lutheran Church became a focal point during the Montgomery bus boycott. Given the plight of black people in Montgomery, my parents had the wherewithal to move our family out west in hopes of creating a better life and giving me and my siblings many more opportunities to succeed here in America. While in Montgomery, being exposed to the racist policies and ideologies of those in power, we were encouraged to stand up for what was right and just, actively participating in the Montgomery bus boycott, becoming junior members of the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Color People, where I first received my first membership card from the then secretary and cousin by marriage, Rosa Parks. I still have vivid memories of December 1st, 1955, learning of Rosa Parks' arrest, sitting in the white section of the bus. I was visiting my grandmother who had a two-party telephone line a telephone where several people shared the same line. The two-party telephone line became the quickest mechanism to get the latest news, and this is how we learned of her arrest and the beginning of the Montgomery bus boycott. The NAACP and the interfaith leaders became heavily invested in the boycott. They bought several station wagon vans and transported community members to and from work. There was no charge, but you could give money if you were able. This calling for standing up for what is right and just has been an integral part of my life, affording opportunities to others without a voice who have been silenced and overlooked. The words of the prophet Micah have served as one of the many mantras in my life. What does the Lord require of you? Do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. God really does have a sense of humor in a wild imagination. Who would have thought that I would spend 30 plus years of my professional career in the Lutheran Church, arguably one of the whitest Christian denominations in America? <laughs> How did this happen? This was not my doing. But I venture to say the work of the Holy Spirit and many saints along the way. I have served as an assistant to four bishops, serving in areas of candidacy and mobility for those in discernment and those who are seeking new calls to ministry. I have served the wider church by serving on various committees including roster leaders and the Commission for Women in the ELCA. In these positions, I was able to support and encourage those who otherwise would not have been considered for candidacy in this church. I have traveled the world on behalf of the church. I have provided for my family, nurturing my children to become
self-sufficient women who are successful in their own right and who have also heeded the call for standing up for what is right and just. And one daughter serving as a children's social worker and the other as an advocate for higher education and community and civic engagement. In spite of it all, with the foresight of my parents and the desire to work for justice and peace, I embody what it means to proclaim that we are all made in and represent the image of God beyond our wildest imagination.